In that guarded building, behind that security fence, scientists and engineers have just produced a device that could change our whole concept of war and defense. A science fiction weapon that melts steel. A death ray that could be more deadly than a nuclear bomb. It's a beam of light, a new kind of light. A light so intense that they've just shone it up upon the moon and caught the reflection of their own man-made light back upon the Earth after it had traveled half a million miles. A device exactly like this one, coupled with a telescope, achieved 13 moonshots. Each time the light took two and a half seconds for the return journey. Each time man's light up there on the moon was bright enough for the man in the moon to read by. This is called a laser, the initials of light amplification by stimulated emission radiation. That's the power pack with the energy inside a suitcase. Now just watch how even a small laser can shoot a ray of light right through steel and still have enough energy left to burst that balloon. Now watch this light ray, this death ray, again in slow motion. And remember, that's the tiniest laser. Others with many, many times its power have already been built. Giant lasers with unimaginable power are already under study. The scientist inserts a sheet of thin steel. In charge of this special microwave devices operation is an Englishman, Dr. Colin Bowness from Finchley in North London. A device like that one has just shone a light on the moon and its reflections have been detected back here on Earth. Was your light visible going up or coming back? Well, it's like any other uh, beam of light. You can't normally see it. You can see a searchlight beam, you see, that well, you're talking you, about. Yes, you could see it in that manner uh, at a certain height in the sky. The sky was very clear, but at a certain level there must have been some dust or water vapor. And looking from behind the telescope, one could see a very single thin, very thin single line of light, uh, rather like a tracer bullet. Like a what? A tracer bullet mm -hmm. going through this cloud. Uh, you can't estimate how high this might have been, but it was clear that it was a very narrow beam indeed. But even your light, of course, was not bright enough to be visible to the naked eye upon the moon. Well, on the moon, it would be just visible uh, if there were no other sources of light. However, at the moon, presumably, the Earth would look very bright to you at that time. Now, if you were looking towards the Earth, you would certainly have seen a bright red flash. Uh, if there were no other light, uh, the strength of our laser beam at the moon would be about the same as if you had this flashlight in an ordinary size room. So it might be enough to read by. But of course it only lasted for this very short pulse. The scientist who controls the advanced systems department of this laboratory, Mr. Stanley Cass, won't discuss the use of this fearsome ray as a space weapon, but he will talk about its peaceful use. First, I think we ought to look at the unusual properties of the laser. The properties that allowed us to shine the light to the moon and see its return were the properties of delivering a very intense beam of light, having a very short duration, and within such a narrow beam that it diverged only to create a spot of about two miles on the surface of the moon. Now, if we consider radar applications, we can consider these now at optical frequencies instead of being limited to those frequencies in the microwave region where we have magnetrons and klystrons. If we consider an optical radar of this type, it has many interesting properties. For example, the light beam is about 100 times narrower than the narrowest of the radar beams that we can create. So that if we wanted to examine, for example, the surface of the moon, we could examine it as precisely as the astronomer instead of as loosely as the radar would have with a 200-mile spot of resolution instead of a two-mile spot. Now, if we were to consider the same property used in another way, let us consider microsurgery. 
I mentioned that we could create smaller spots. Uh, these spots are limited only by the wavelength of the light. We can consider, therefore, that the spot size can be about one micron, that is 30 millionths of an inch in diameter. Now, with a spot that small, we can consider surgery within a single human cell. Applications, of course, will have to be determined after we learn how to use such a tool. But a human cell is on the order of about 10 microns. The spot would be one micron. And the heating effect could, in effect, be a surgical tool. We could consider its effect on microbiology, where, for example, a single protein molecule is only about one micron in size. And hence, you can consider a chain of protein molecules or other types of molecules that size, where you can pick off a molecule one at a time and change the essential building block nature of the material. And this, of course, can be expected to have tremendous importance to the scientific community in this area. The death ray that's been sought for years, the perfect defense against a nuclear missile, one of the greatest scientific achievements of the age. There are scientists here who believe all this, and certainly an American general, a chief of staff, has said that this light ray could prove more deadly than a nuclear missile. Well, we shall see. At least we've been in at the birth of this terribly concentrated ray of light as it shines out of its balloon stage and up into space. From Wayland, Massachusetts, good night.